Welcome to the Essential Grid Tutorials. This is the third video in our series on how to set up the Essential Grid plugin for the WordPress platform. My name is Sarah Oates and I'm from Endure Web Studios and I'm really excited because in this video we get to start setting up an actual grid. So in the last two videos we looked at installing, registering, getting some inspiration and also getting your blog posts ready to go. So blog posts all need to have categories or tags. If they don't, then you won't get a grid. So if you haven't done that yet, go back to the other videos and make sure you know how to do that. So for this one, what we're going to be doing is looking at how to make a grid like this grid here, where when you hover over it, it does something and it goes into an actual blog post and it's going to bring them in every time. So every time there's a new one, the f it's going to show up as this very first one. All right, so let's head into the back end and get going with it. All right, so all you need to do, you come into your essential grid area. You won't have anything here because it's your first grid. That's fine. And then you click on new essential grid. There's a lot of fancy things you can do with these. This particular video, we're just going to show you how to get a, a really stock standard kind of grid up and going, which still looks absolutely fantastic and well worth it. So what you need to do is give it a name. We're going to give it the name Weddings and then you give it an alias, which I usually give it the exact same name. But if it was a long one, for example, you might say Wedding Venues. Um, just make sure you don't have spaces or capitals in that particular section. All right, then we come through to our source. I'm not sure why that's sticking. Okay, so at this point you need to select where is it going to collect the information for the grid. And you are likely to press on Post. But for me, I've got projects. Projects and posts work in exactly the same way. So you would just be selecting on posts and then you can see our categories turn up. As you can see in posts, there are no categories. And so no categories turn up. And if I tried to make a grid with no categories, then nothing would show up. So that's why it's essential to have um, categories or tags. Both of them work and both of them would show up here in this section here. All right, so we've now selected. It's going to be from a project or a post and it's going to contain these categories. You need to highlight them for them to be active. The next thing to know is maximum entries. If you like that example over here where you can just see six, there are more than six. I think there's actually only seven, but um, I only ever want it to show six on that front home page. So that's where you can do that right here. If you want it to show absolutely everything, then you would say minus one and that will show all of the entries that are available. Feature image means that it's going to bring in the feature image from your actual blog post um, that you have already pre-selected. All right, so at that point, you would think, I want to see it down here. There's no preview what's going on. And you might think, well, I'll click on refresh preview but nothing shows up again. So what you actually have to do at this point is save your grid. I'm not quite sure why it does this, but then it'll bring you back out into your main area and when you click on settings again, come back into the grid and ta-da, there is your grid. All right, so at this point, you could pretty well just save it if you wanted to. If that was showing exactly the way you were happy with it, it's doing a hover effect, fantastic. I can click on it and it's gonna go into it, great. But I will show you a few other settings just in case. These are just some of the basic ones. So in your layout, you have some options. Um, you can select boxed, which means it's going to have that white space on the left and the right, full width or full screen. Um, these will actually override the original setting as well. Well, at least in Divi they will. Um, so you might want it to go the full width of the page and you could do it there. All right, um, so then you have even masonry or cobbled. Even is what's selected at the moment. So all of the images are going to come in exactly the same size. Masonry means that they will show up the way that the actual images exist. So there's some portrait, some landscape, and that can be a really nice image, uh, nice way of doing it. Then you've got cobbles. So cobbles is kind of like masonry, except you have more power over it. So um, you turn on cobbles and you add a little bit of a pattern. So maybe we'll have one to one, two to one, one to one, and then we click refresh preview. And so now you can see that it gives this nice little pattern where they're all different sizes. Um, I think that's quite a nice feature and it'd be a lot of fun to play with. Um, we might even just leave that on for now. All right, so then you've got the option of how many images do you want it to show? Um, actually, my cobbles are going to muck that up, so we'll just come back to even. So now you can see 
that in my example here, it's showing four across. And if I go even wider, hopefully, it'll show five across. And then as you come over, um, oh, that went off the screen then, I just noticed, but you get my point. Um, so you can go smaller or bigger and you can change that. So on my example over here, I've told it to always be three across unless it gets to a mobile and then it's gonna be two across on a tablet and one across on a mobile. Um, so you can play with those. You don't need the advanced settings for that. Then you come down to pagination. So this is if you, it's saying enable pagination. So only show three rows. So if we had hundreds of blog posts, it would only show three rows. And then underneath it would have like a one, two, three for scrolling through the different pages. Another option here is you can disable it and have like a load more button. So underneath it now there'll be a button that says load more. And initially it'll show three items. That's not three rows, that's three items. And then it'll add another three items. Um, so if you were doing items, you might do like eight items and then add another four items. Or another option, which I think is a nice one, is infinite scroll. So it'll show eight items and as the user scrolls down, then it'll add another four items each time. Um, lazy load is kind of similar to that. Um, so if you had that on none and then you had lazy load, then I think it would keep adding them. I'm not sure about that. Um, then you need to add your item spacing. So you can either have them back to back like they are now or you can add a little bit of space between them. You can also add space around the whole thing. So you don't need to use CSS, which is kind of nice that they've added that in as a feature. We're going to take that back to zero for this example. And then we come into the nav filter. Now we're going to do a whole video on navigation and how you can get really intricate with it, which is fantastic. But in this particular one, the only thing you need to know is that right here down in sorting, this is going to show what order it's going to show the blog post. So it naturally comes in as date and by ascending. And I always change this to descending. So descending means the newest one is going to be at the start and I think that that is more useful. So then I click on save because it's always good to click on save. And the final thing we're going to show you in this video is that this is where you can change the skins. So if you want to change it to something else, if you've gone into um, your essential grid examples and you've had a look through and you've seen other examples of what you're wanting to use, this is where you can change it. And all you need to do is click on the actual title itself and that will change it to be that exact one. So let's click on this one for an example. Click on save changes and now we just need to stick it into our page. So let's go over to the pages area. And you can do it in two ways. You can go back to the essential grid here and you can copy this and bring it in. And all you have to do is stick it into a text area. Um, we've got a test page ready to go. So you can come here into your text area and just copy and paste it in there. Another way that you can do it if you don't have that is here somewhere. Oh, there it is, essential grid. So you can just come here and say, I wanna add weddings. Add selected grid, and there it is, it comes in, which is another nice way in case you haven't copied and pasted it and you don't wanna to have to go back. So now you just update your page. And now we're just gonna view the page. All right, so our grids come in. It's got the um, hover effect that we selected with the skin. And now when you click on it, it's going to go into the actual blog post. Um, there's a few other things that we'll look at in other ones, like the fact that when you come in here, it's not going to go through all of the images. So if you're wanting to make an image one where you can flick through them, we'll look at that in a few future video. You can definitely do that. And also we'll look at how you can get rid of that. So if you just wanted to have this link and not that link, then we'll look at how you can edit the actual skins themselves. But there you go, you have your first grid ready to go, um, nice and simple. And um, I hope that you have fun with it. Hopefully I've given you enough explanation to get going with it. If I haven't, just feel free to ask any questions and we'll see if we can um, give you some answers to that. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we start to look at some other special features in Essential Grid. Thanks, have a great day.